Hi, my name is Jason Reeder and I'm an Applications Engineer at Texas Instruments providing broad market Linux PRU support. I've noticed that many customers think that the only way to get the PRU C compiler and use it is to download Code Composer Studio. Today, I'll show you that downloading CCS isn't necessary and that actually you can even install and use the PRU C compiler on one of our Satara evaluation modules. In this video, I'll be running the latest processor SDK Linux distribution on a BeagleBone Black. It is assumed that you can boot your board to the login prompt and have access to the terminal. That is where this video begins. Let's jump in and run the PRU example that is included in the Linux processor SDK. Log into the device by typing root at the prompt. Next, we'll list everything in the dev folder and then we'll grep for the word PRU to see our PRU RP message character devices. You can see that we have two character devices shown with channel 30 communicating with PRU0 and channel 31 communicating with PRU1. Now we'll send some characters to PRU0 using the echo command. Finally, we can use the cat command on the character device to see the response from the PRU. In this out-of-box example, the PRU just echoes the characters back to the user unchanged. Use control C to close the character device and return to the prompt. The remainder of this video will follow these steps to enable you to modify, rebuild, and rerun the example that we just saw, all from the console prompt of a BeagleBone Black. Let's get started by downloading and installing the PRU C compiler. First, let's download the PRU code generation tools installer for ARM devices. I use the wget command to download the installer directly to my board. This video assumes that your board has access to the public internet. If it does not, then you will need to download the ARM installer from the link shown at the end of this video and copy it to your board manually. Check the attributes of the installer once you get it onto your board. You will notice that the executable flag is not set. Use chmod to make the installer executable and then run it. Installation may take a few minutes as the files are being extracted into place. Once installation is complete, we'll create a symbolic link for the bin directory so that we can use make files provided in the PRU software support package as is. The installer is no longer needed, so it can be removed from the file system. Moving on to the next step, it's time to clone the PRU software support package, which contains the source code for the out-of-box example. Once again, my board is connected directly to the internet so I can use the git clone command to pull the repository to my board. If you are not connected to the internet, you will need to download the repository using your host machine and copy it to your board manually. The link to the repository is shown at the end of this video. Now let's navigate to the out-of-box example directory in the repository and list the files. We will modify the main.c file and then rebuild the example using the make file in the same directory. Type vi main.c to begin editing. Move your cursor down to the channel description and channel port definitions and then change them both from 30 to 35. Keep moving down to the inner while loop and add the two lines shown. These two lines will overwrite the first two characters of anything sent to the PRU with the letters T and I. Save and close the file. Next we need to add an environment variable to let the make file know where the PRU code generation tools have been installed. Now we can use make to build our example. You will see the output from the compiler and linker stages of the build process and then the log will tell you that the output files can be found in the gen directory. Navigate to the gen directory and list the files. The .out file is our newly built PRU firmware that we will be running soon. At this point, we need to update the symbolic link that the PRU Linux driver uses to load the PRU firmware. We will update the symbolic link to point to our newly modified and rebuilt example. To keep things uniform with respect to the out-of-box example, we are going to copy the rebuilt firmware to the same folder as the out-of-box firmwares. 
but we are going to give it a new name to indicate that it has been modified. We'll be putting the firmwares into the lib, firmware, pru directory, and appending the word modified to the end of the name. Once that has been copied, let's navigate to the lib firmware directory and take a look at the existing symbolic link for the PRU0 firmware. You can see that the AM335X PRU0 firmware symbolic link points to the out-of-box example in the same directory where we just copied our rebuilt firmware. Let's remove and then replace that symbolic link so that we can run our new firmware. I like to perform both of these actions on the same line so that the tab auto-completion continues to work on the symbolic link name. Any typos in the name and the Linux PRU driver will not be able to find the firmware to load. Now that we've updated the symbolic link to point to our rebuilt firmware, let's list the contents of the lib firmware directory one more time to confirm our modified firmware will be used. The next step is to reload the PRU with the new firmware. To do this, we will unbind and then bind the PRU to the PRU RProc bus and then the PRU will be running our new firmware. Navigate to the sys bus platform drivers PRU RProc directory and list the contents of the directory. You'll see the PRU devices in that folder with their 32-bit address followed by their name. We'll now unbind PRU0 and see the console output as the PRU RProc driver halts and then releases the PRU core. At this point, we can bind PRU0 and the PRU RProc driver will load our new firmware into the PRU and run it. If you look through the console output, you can see that our new character device has been created at channel 35, which means that our modifications were successful. Finally, Let's walk through the example from the beginning of this video and see our changes in action. List the contents of the dev directory and grep for PRU again. You'll see that the character device corresponding to channel 30 has disappeared and has been replaced by our new device on channel 35. Now we can send the same characters from our first test, but this time we'll see that they come back with modifications. The first and second characters have been replaced by the letters T and I, which is exactly what we programmed it to do. Using the steps from this video, you now know how to acquire the PRU software support package, modify and build the provided examples, and then load them into the PRU and run them, all from the terminal console of your evaluation module. If you would like more information about Texas Instruments, Linux, Processor SDK, the PRUs, or Remote Proc and RP message, feel free to follow the provided links. For questions regarding this training, please post your questions in our E2E community forums.